<laughs> I was just a total wild card. I could I could hit the podium. I could just be did not finish. It went both ways. And when slope style came around, terrain parks, I didn't have to adhere to like a technique like that where speed yeah. control was necessary. I could just hit the jumps, do my tricks, land them, and get scored. And that gave me a, a way to to achieve my goal of being a pro skier. But um, I don't think I would have ever considered myself like a ski manufacturer growing up. I, you know, to see yeah, myself it's crazy getting into that. that. That's you own your own ski company. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think I think why I got into making skis is because I knew I wasn't going to be sponsored for that long. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that, you know, if I started something like a company around what I'm currently doing as an athlete, then I would have an opportunity to stay in this sport longer. Yeah, I'm and it get, worked out pretty good. I'm going to get passed up by yeah. these young bucks pretty quick. Yeah. And the sport was progressing so quickly at the time that I was fortunate to get in when things were fairly rudimentary and you had a lot of opportunity to explore new rotations. And so just doing something different gave me a chance to stay, um, you know, uh, current. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't the most progressive thing, but it was something different. And while skiing was still developing in such a rapid state, that anything different was 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 well received uh, in in scoring. So I was able to kind of use that momentum, and then boom, start a company, which I had no idea. Wasn't what a huge part of how you started your company? You were sponsored by Fisher, and they weren't making skis the way yeah. you wanted them to. Right. So, so Fisher, um, that relationship was interesting. It came up with a sales rep. Yeah. In Squaw, I was parking cars in Squaw Valley in the parking lot with Kyle, Luke, and some of our friends we grew up skiing here with. And uh, this rep was like, "Hey, I, I you know, I heard of you or, or saw you. I want you to try out these new skis that we make." And they were flat-tailed skis, but wider. And I was thinking, "Hey, what a great opportunity! It's the first pair of free skis I've ever gotten. Um, I'd love to ski on." Yeah. And that's where things started with me and Fisher as my ski sponsor going into what was probably like a four-year relationship. And we climaxed at me building a ski with him. And it wasn't that I knew how to put certain ingredients together to make a great ski. I just knew that the shape that they were trying to work with yeah. wasn't modern enough to accommodate the, the state and progressing state of free skiing. We needed to move the side cut further up towards the tip of the ski. And increase the width of the tail, make the tail turned up so we can ski more confidently backwards and just just center everything. Because mm -hmm. the skis were still very much designed like a like a race ski where side cuts were really deep in the tail of the ski at a disproportionately long tip and short and stiff tail and it just wasn't very playful. Yeah. And if you hit any like uh, short transitions, the, there was so much ski in front of the boot that the ski would like go into the transition and then rebound before your foot even got through it. Yeah. So we knew that we needed to move our foot further up the ski to like hit transitions and sink and like really have a playful poppy um, yeah. opportunity. And so, so it's it's pretty cool because what you guys did, kind of coming into it, you'd like you guys kind of paved the way for some of these huge companies. Absolutely, they want nothing to do with it. No, they they didn't know more about centering a ski and doing all that stuff. You came into it and yeah. kind of made all that happen. You it's know, pretty cool. As Americans, we, we inherited a sport from Europe. Um, we got the chairlifts, we got their ski yeah. schools, we bought their skis. And it wasn't until America uh, kind of born free skiing that we start to challenge what is it that these skis are designed for and how does that relate to what I'm trying to accomplish with ski. I think, you know, coming from a culture that started snowboarding, free skiing was a natural um, chain of events yeah. that have happened. There was too much youth participation focused only on snowboarding. That eventually the pendulum had to swing back towards skiing in some way, but skiing needed something like free skiing to get it to come back to. Yeah. And while those companies knew they needed to attract more and more youth participation and, and regain some of that market share loss of snowboarding, they didn't know how they were going to do it. And by nature, the American culture was innovative enough to think, hey, let's start um, kind of a snowboard style approach to skiing and challenge manufacturers on how they design the skis. But those companies, as soon as they saw the trends that were developing in the West Coast in America, which I was fortunate to be part of, they were very um, standoffish. Yeah. And I think it's because they're just, they're a ski company that's been around for so many years that if it's not their idea, they're not into it. You know what I mean? They're like a know-it-all, like an old guy. You're like, oh no, that's not how we do it around here. This we do it this way, this way only. Because I've been I've been here the longest, and this is the best way to do it. 
And I think that was their attitude. And kind of set in their ways and they do what they know yeah. is going to work. They're not willing to... I mean, I gave Fisher, you know, a, 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 it was actually part of a senior thesis when I went to college, how to kick off a free ride program. Yeah. I, I told him, I made this into a school project. I want you to check out my proposal. I still wish I had it. Um, and let me know what you think. Because I think free skiing can go, can go places. And as a brand with so much accolade already in the industry, but for you guys to step up and do free skiing, you guys can own it. Because nobody else is taking advantage of this. Well, the 2002 Winter Olympics were around the corner in Salt Lake. And Bodie Miller was their man. And they were like, nope, we're going to put a bunch of money back into racing. And I was like, well, if, if that's your direction right now, my career lifespan is too short to wait around. And I got a hold of a buddy of mine who uh, made snowboards in his garage. Ooh. And his press was post to post, 180 centimeters. And Which so know, happens the MSP is, is a 180. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> and, and now we didn't have those limitations anymore. And we challenged the big companies and we said, you know what, we believe so wholeheartedly that this is going to grow youth appeal back to our sport that I'm going to venture out and try to make skis myself. I don't know anything about making skis, yeah. but how tough can it be? <laughs> it proved to be really yeah. tough. Yeah, Let me grab Adam sitting in the back. No way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It proved to be pretty tough. You know, the hardest thing I learned about making skis is that you had to make two identical skis. With snowboards, you can just make one snowboard, and a 56 is a 56 is a 56, and they can be their own board in their own way. As a consumer, you can shop and buy that board, whatever one feels right like for you. But with skis, you have to make two identical. Oh, check geez. that out. That's awesome, isn't it? This is fantastic. First four friends pretty much ever made, huh? Is there a serial number? Of, yeah, uh, I don't know what that would even mean. The serial number back then. Yeah, I'll stamp something on them. <laughs> awesome, isn't it? Nice bindings, dude. Oh yeah. Very first ones with the board shop sticker on yep. them. Yep. P-Tech sidewalls. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is awesome. You know, you know what's crazy, and I think this was a little bit of beginner's luck, is that um, these skis are indestructible, and I don't know why. It's unbelievable. I've never seen a pair of these delaminate in a way that many skis after them that were made did. And I only can accredit the fact that the industry needed something like this to happen. And uh, we were fortunate to be the fathers of it at that time. But man, this is a 12-year-old a ski, 13-year-old ski. And my first, my first pro model. Self-assigned, of course. Been in X Games a few times. Yeah, yeah. There's been some great competitions, uh, X Games, Gravity Games. Uh, there's a bunch of event series that I used to do in Europe, and that's all what helped build the momentum I had uh, with my with my sponsors. That made you know being a pro skier, I actually a pro skier. I made yeah. money doing it. For a yeah. while. I spent everything I made, um, and I had to get a summer job, which is the glamour that a lot of people don't realize. You know, there's in, in the world of pro skiing, at least, there's probably 10 athletes, maybe 15. Who make a lot of money doing it. Who make uh, an opportunity to actually retire yeah. off of a career. Uh, and that might be generous, speaking. Um, and this is free skiing. Obviously, there's, there's the FIS World Cup and, and those disciplines that have their own pool of, of celebrities. But free skiing itself is probably only capable worldwide of supporting 10 to 15 different skiers on a retirement level. Sure. Um, where they won't have to ever have to go get a job. The rest of the thousands and hundreds of thousands of free skiers are aspiring to be pro, but the top is a very small plateau. Yeah. You know? And um, you know, growing up here, you were you were led to believe that if you could ski as well as what you were seeing on TV, that you had a chance to be a pro skier yourself. And all we had was really mogul skiing to watch, and that was just World Cup events that once in a while you'd catch on TV because there was really no internet. Yeah. Um, there was no magazine covering. There was the Bud Mobile Tour. Yeah. Um, but all these events were out west. And so I think it's fortunate and unfortunate for me that my family 
growing up and still to this day doesn't care about skiing at all. And I don't know what that's all about exactly. I don't know. I'm a father now, and I wonder if my son's going to be into things that I just don't care about at all. And maybe he'll take whatever he's into that I'm not paying attention to somehow and make that his lifelong pursuit. To me, that's a totally baffling concept that I'm living in in my life with my family. Why they, why none of them wanted it? I don't even really care. I don't have any sentiment toward, like resentment towards them. But like, why would you not care about how much I love to do something to the point where I've made it my life? Yeah. And you don't even try it. Yeah. That's bizarre. And maybe it's because they weren't into it, so it was wholeheartedly my thing. And so because it was just my thing, then I could own it. You know, so it wasn't football. It wasn't in the shadows of my dad's basketball um, career or anything of that nature. You know, it was something that I just did wholeheartedly on my own. Nobody had any any hands in on doing it. I learned everything I did on skis myself. And maybe that was just like that, that piss and vinegar that made me want to be a pro skier and start a ski company and just stay so heavily rooted in the ski industry that I just think skiing every day. Yeah, right. Um, I don't know what it is. Yeah. But one thing I can accredit skiing for is that Growing up here and, and falling in love with it here, the worst days out west are still far better than the God, best yeah, days dude, here. For sure. I mean, I don't want to say best days in the sense that like you can always do better than here because that's not the case. There's a spirit of skiing that lives in the Midwest that I can only find here and that I come back looking for every year. It's part of the skiing experience for me as a whole. 